What is going on everybody? Hope you are good. Welcome back to the channel. You might have seen the other week that I did my first ever bodybuilding show and I've put a little bit of a vlog of the weekend on one of the earlier videos. So if you haven't seen that, go and watch that because in today's episode, I'm going to chat you through how we peaked for the show. So by that, what I mean is I'm going to talk you through how we adjusted my nutrition, my training and my expenditure for the week leading up to the show to make sure that we were coming in as lean and as big as we possibly could. So that's what we're going to be jumping into. But as ever, before I do, if you like these videos, videos then do me a flavor go and drop a like on the video subscribe to the channel we are nicely growing on the channel and i want to keep that moving so once you've done that get a cup of tea sit down get comfy and let's jump into my peak week First of all, what is a peak week? It is literally just a fancy term that we give to the week leading into a photo shoot or a show or something like that. The goal of a peak week is to bring you in looking as lean and as full, so your muscles looking as big as we possibly can. That is it. There's nothing more technical than that going on. Peak weeks are nothing special. They're not some magical cure that if you're not lean enough for whatever event you're dieting for going into a peak week, a peak week isn't going to suddenly make you look lean enough. In fact, you only really need a peak week if you're already lean enough to be able to see the difference that it might make. Because it's only really going to give us a 1-2% to marginal difference or improvement if you're already lean enough to see those benefits. If you're not, you really don't need a peak week and you'd actually just be better off continuing to diet down all the way through to whatever it is that you're doing, whether it's a photo shoot or a show. They're seen as this massive magical thing that can fix all problems or suddenly make a physique look incredible, when in reality, they're not. They're just a few days of tapering a few different things to try and get the best out of your physique. And with that comes a lot of mistakes. Some of the more common mistakes you see during a peak week are people messing around with their water, doing massive water loads, consuming 8, 9, 10, 11 litres of water a day to try and flush all of the water out of the body and then cutting it off for a day before the event that they're dieting for. All that achieves is that you lose all the water from inside of your muscles as well as outside of your muscles, which means that you can't then get as much glycogen into the muscle and they end up looking smaller, flatter, and you actually probably look smoother and not quite as lean as a result. People also mess around with salt to try and and help that water manipulation which again just further complicates things and really if you want a good peak week the key is to just keep things simple if you're happy with how you're looking going into a peak week you really don't need to change that much it's just small adjustments and the same goes for training people have all kinds of different ideas with what you need to do with your training when in reality all we're looking to do is minimize stress on the body minimize any inflammation on the muscles and get some blood and a pump going so that you're ready for the day with whatever it is you're doing and that is it so i'm going to get my peak week up and i'm going to talk you through exactly what we did in the week leading up to my show this is it this is what my peak week looks like for the week leading into the show that i've just done so you can see we're starting from seven days out and there's some really really simple adjustments that we made to try and just make sure that i came in looking as lean and as full as i possibly could we'll start with nutrition you can see that across the week there was a very slow taper down of protein day to day. This was just to help minimize any sort of digestive stress. We know that protein tends to sit in your gut quite a bit longer. It takes longer to break down and we didn't want to have any of that still sat in my gut. When it came to getting on stage, I wanted my waist to be as small as possible. So we slowly tapered protein down across the week. We weren't going to lose any muscle by doing this within the space of a week. And also it then meant that we were leaving room for more carbohydrates to help fill out the muscles a bit more, look a bit bigger and get as lean as we possibly can. At the start of the week, you can see that we went in relatively low with our carbohydrates to try and bring ourselves down. The reason for this was literally just because we decided to to jump in to do the show pretty last minute and we wanted to make sure that our condition was going to be as good as it possibly could be and we wanted to try and make sure we were dropping as much body fat as possible before we then filled back up with carbs. We normally wouldn't go so aggressive on the depletion in a peak week because there is no real logic to getting rid of all the carbohydrates inside your muscles 
only to then refill them back up again a couple of days later. If you're happy with how you're looking, you don't need to do this. But we knew that we had a tiny bit more to come off to make sure that we wouldn't look out of place on stage and we wouldn't be beaten on condition. So you can see for the first four days, we did start to drop carbs down quite aggressively alongside fats as well to help keep calories nice and low and just drive any last minute fat loss that we could. From three days out, that's where things started to change. So we'd trialed a couple of carb ups going into the peak week. We had a rough idea of the amount of carbs that my body tended to respond quite well to. And we wanted to make sure that we didn't overspill going into the show, which basically means we didn't want to have too many carbs that it made me look a little bit softer and smoother and not quite as lean. So you can see that we actually front loaded the majority of these carbs onto that first day of the load. So we went in with 600 grams of carbs three days out from the show. We then brought this down to 500 grams of carbs two days out from the show. And actually, if I remember rightly, the day before the show, we kept carbs up at 500 grams because I woke up that morning just looking a little bit flatter than we would like. So we actually added 100 grams of carbs in and I just repeated the same that I'd done the day before. And you can see with fats as well, once we started the load, they also came up. Reason being for this is it was A, because of the amount of trace fats that we would get from the carbohydrate sources, they would naturally be higher anyway, so it was just to account for that. But also B, if you increase your fats a little bit alongside your carbohydrate intake, it does help with holding those carbs a bit longer and holding that fuller look, that bigger look for a little bit longer. So as we brought protein down for these three days before the show, we drove carbohydrates way up to try and fill out and we also kept fats up a little bit more to help try and hold that fullness. The other thing that you can see is fiber or vegetable intake. Now, what's really important here is that we start to minimize that going into the show. So for three days leading into the show, I actually started to massively reduce my fiber intake. And although it doesn't say it on my plan here, I was literally just consuming leafy greens. I would have a handful of leafy greens with my meals and that was it. I had no more veg because again, we didn't want to be taking in too much fiber that was going to sit in my digestive system, sit in my stomach, cause any bloating, cause any gas and not have me looking as lean as we would want on the day. And also because I was eating so many carbohydrates, I didn't need need the same amount of vegetables to help keep me feeling fuller. So we brought this right down. And to be honest, my fiber intake was probably lower than 20 grams a day for the couple of days before the show. Again, just to minimize any sort of digestive stress that could have occurred that we wouldn't want to see there. So that was what we did with my protein, carbs and fats and fiber across the week. We slowly tapered things down for any last minute fat loss at the start of the week and then we filled up towards the end of the week with pictures every morning seeing how we were looking to make sure we were looking as full as we possibly could and we minimized any fruit or vegetable intake for a few days before it to again make sure there was no digestive stress going on and we looked as lean as we possibly could. So the mistake I told you most people make is water. They mess around with water far too much and it literally just ends up meaning that they look really, really flat on the day because we know with every gram of water that we store, we store three grams of glycogen. Well, if you're not getting in that water in the first place, there's no way of the glycogen getting into the muscle. So we needed to keep water in. So really, really simple. All we did for the week leading into the show was we increased my water intake by one liter a day. And that's it. I went up to six liters a day. I drank that. I kept that consistent. It did mean that I was going to the toilet pretty much every 30 minutes for a week, but we kept that the exact same. We kept our salt intake the exact same because we were happy with how I was looking anyway. So the extra liter of water was really just to flush out any small excess sitting in the areas that we didn't want. Didn't get any crazier than that. And then the day before the show, we dropped back down to five liters. And then on the morning of the show, I actually drank about 500 mils of water before I got on stage around lunchtime. So we didn't cut water out at any point because we wanted to make sure that whatever carbohydrates we were consuming were going to be carried into the muscles that we wanted them to be carried into with some water being there. So we didn't cut water out at any point and we also didn't go crazy with taking in too much water as well. It meant that we kept a really nice stable reliable look and we knew pretty much how I was going to end up looking on the day. The simpler you keep it 
the better the result. Now, there are tons of ways that you could do a carb load during a peak week. It's completely up to you how you do it. Some people will start the week with a fat load and then do a rapid back load. Some people will front load a carbohydrate intake and have all the carbs at the start of the week and then try and dry themselves out with lower carbs going into the event. It doesn't really matter. There isn't one way of doing it that's better than the other. It kind of just comes down to what works best for you. So the best advice I can give you is practice doing a peak week one or two times in the month leading up to whatever event it is that you're dieting for. So run this through, try it out, see how your body responds, see how you feel, see how you look, and then you can use that information to determine whether you're gonna do that again leading into the actual event. We ran two or three different occasions where we had about 500 grams of carbs a day for three days in a row, and we upped my water, and we just had a look at how I was looking. We were happy with the look, we felt like we weren't gonna get much better than that, so that's pretty much what we replicated going into the show. Now, when it comes to training, like I said, this is another area where people make a mistake by changing everything that they've been doing up to that point. And you really don't need to do it. So what you can see from my training here is that we had a lower body session six days out from the show. This was literally just my normal leg session. The reason why you tend to do it at the start of the week is because legs are such a large muscle group. They demand a lot of energy. They have a lot of fatigue. They can cause a lot of inflammation. So we want to get that done and out the way nice and early in the week so that we've got the rest of the week to recover inflammation can come back down, minimal water retention, and we're looking as lean as we possibly can. So legs was done at six days out. I kept cardio in at 200 calories a day until three days out. So we kept consistent expenditure going in because again, it's what we'd been doing in the run up to this peak week and we didn't want to change too much. We had a look that we liked. We wanted to keep it reliable. So we kept cardio nice and low, but in until three days away from the show. And then the actual sessions themselves, you can see here we did three upper body sessions. So we wanted to make sure that whilst we were loading up with carbohydrates, we were pushing those into my chest, my delts, my arms, my back as much as we possibly could by having regular workouts hitting those muscle groups. Now, these workouts were nothing strenuous. When it comes to training in your peak week, the goal is literally just to drive glycogen into the muscles that you're aiming for and to get a pump on. You don't want to be aiming for PBs. You don't want to be causing any sort of muscle damage because again, that's just going to cause inflammation and water retention and mean that you look smaller and smoother. You literally just want to get a pump on. So these workouts took me about 30 to 40 minutes max. And I was staying well, well, well away from failure throughout every single workout. I was literally working at about 50 to 60% intensity for every single exercise so that we were just getting a nice squeeze in the muscle, driving the carbohydrates where they needed to go, getting a bit of a pump on, taking a few pictures, seeing how we looked, seeing if we were happy, and that was it. There was nothing special to training at all. These were all exercises that I'd had in my programming throughout the last 10 months. There was nothing new in there that was gonna cause some sort of novel stimulus and fatigue and muscle damage. It was all exercises I was used to, and that was it. And then we had a rest day. So the day before the show, which was a Saturday, we didn't train, food was kept at 500 grams of carbs. It was literally just a case of going down to Birmingham where the show was, chilling out, minimal steps, no cardio, getting my tan done in the evening, and then waking up the next morning. There was a couple of meals in the morning. I had literally had some chicken and rice that I'd prepped and taken down with me every two or three hours leading into the show with a couple of rice cakes and some jam just for some quick sugar whilst I was pumping up backstage. And that was it. That was the peak week. As you can see, there is nothing crazy on there. There is nothing magic on there. There is no secret supplement. There is no secret strategy strategy with water loading. There is no crazy thing with carb manipulation. It was literally just bring us down at the start of the week to get us as lean as possible, throw some carbs in towards the end of the week to look as full as possible, keep water nice and consistent and get a bit of a pump on with training and make sure that we come into the show not fatigued, not tired, not run down, but ready to go. And that was literally it. That was That is all you have to do in a peak week. That was my full peak week for the show that I had just done, which resulted in me turning up on the day looking like this. If you were to ask me what are the five peak week commandments I could give you, it would literally just be, number one, if you're not lean enough in the first place, you don't need a peak week. Just keep dieting into whatever event that you're dieting for. 
because the leaner you look, the bigger and the better you're probably going to look. Commandment number two, don't overcomplicate things. There is nothing magic about a peak week. It is going to make a marginal improvement at the absolute best. Don't need to mess around with water loading. You don't need to mess around with salt. You don't need to mess around with new training styles and new exercises. Do what you know has worked up to that point. Keep it consistent, rely on what you know, and you will come in looking your absolute best. Commandment number three, test it out beforehand. Like I said, we trialed this one or two times in the couple of months leading into the show. So make sure that you've had a bit of practice, you know what to expect, you know how your body responds, and use that information to dictate what you're then gonna do for that week leading into the event. Make sure you test it out. Number four, I didn't mention this when I was going through the peak week, but don't eat anything new. When we did the carb up, I literally just consumed higher volumes of the food that I was already eating. So it literally meant that I was eating more oats, more rice, more bread, more cereal, jam, and honey. And that was it. I didn't try and work in any exciting new foods, anything to mix it up. I stuck with the foods that I know my body digested well, that didn't cause any bloating, that didn't cause any gas, and that would keep me looking as good as I possibly could. So keep your food choices simple, stick with what you know works, and just eat more of them if your targets are higher. And finally, commandment number five, a peak week is nothing magic. Most of the time, you probably don't even need one. They are literally to get the last 1% difference. And if you're not lean enough in the first place, they're not going to make any difference whatsoever. There is nothing special about a peak week. It is literally just to try and get that last little edge to have you looking as lean as possible and as big as possible. But if you're not happy with how you look going into a peak week, you're probably not going to be happy with how you would look at the end of a peak week. So do the work first, get into a position where you're happy with how you're looking, and then a peak week might be useful for you to use leading into event, but it isn't anything magic. That is it, guys. That is the end of the episode. That is my entire peak week, how I peaked my physique for the show that I did a few weeks ago, how you might want to use these in future if you're ever trying to peak yourself for an event, and how I think they should be approached. As ever, guys, if you found this useful, don't forget like and subscribe to the channel and if you still haven't watched it yet go and click the little card up here to watch my full show weekend vlog where you can literally see me go all the way down to Birmingham you'll see me on stage you'll see the class I was in and you'll get my thoughts on if I would ever do it again with that being said thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video